From transmitters of the Independent Broadcasting Authority, this is Granada. Here comes the great new climber from Lion's Maid. Orbit. Super size. Super ice cream. Orbit. It's got orange ice cream and raspberry ice cream dipped in chalk. Yes. Orbit breaks the flavor barrier. Orbit with astounding free space picture cards. Orbit the greatest. Orbit the big ice cream on a stick from Lion's Maid. On sale now. So we're in the brook, we'll have to clamber down the bank, as you do. Uh, Worsley's a lovely village, I may have shown you some bits of it where the canal is. Um, now the Worsley brook, parts of it are very old and it goes underneath the Bridgewater Canal. So I'm hoping to see some old stonework and I have seen pictures of where we're heading towards and uh, quite a nice thing, there's like a bit of a nice, we can't follow the brook all the way through but there's a reason why and you'll see. Roy's seen it, Roy's been here before um, and at the very last bit there's a very very deep section that we can't go through so uh, but it does get a bit picturesque anyway let's crack on and see what it's like uh, and we've got a bit of a limbo job in front of us ah. so is that a sewer? that's a sewer crossing go to this now I think this is a sewer. This is a it is, is it? Is it you going to do an attempt to what you just did? Oh, With a parky. <laughs> so easy to do. Yeah, but he's a big lanky street to yeah. so he gets over it really easily. Yeah. Come on, yeah. Go on here and have a swim. I'll go fishing. Hello, my name is Martin. Welcome back to another video. We're here in Worsley and we're going to do a quick culvert, but an interesting culvert, the Worsley Brook. We've got Roy here. This is Roy's baby. And we've got Marcus here, Parky Pants from Sheffield. That's what we call him anyway. So without further ado, we're going to go into the Worsley Brook. Now, it makes its way around the Bridgewater Canal, which is where we are here. The Bridgewater Canal famously stained with ochre from the mines at Worsley done a video on that before so let's crack on go underground and take a look at this just interesting but short section of the Worsley Brook are you ready yeah. right so a bit of a short culvert before the main culvert now As you can see up there see it's not very far it's about just over ankle deep Anybody, any idea what these are? I think it's a hole for moths. Look, they're moths. Oh my god, they're joking. Look at all that. Look at those moths. <laughs> Don't let them fly at me. That's moths. Can I let them fly? No, no, no. Let no, me come no, past leave them. them. Leave them. No, I never told leave them. Good Sorry. god, I've never seen anything like that in my entire life. What a scary thing that is. I'm not into moths. No, I'm not. I mean, god bless them. God bless the moths. But, uh, yeah. Let's leave them be. Sorry to be a soft ass, but I like moths. Moths are nice. But uh, 100 moths flying in your mouth all at once? Maybe not for me. All the moths there. Why? Where do we get the water? Well, look at the roots there. Definitely found a good spot there, haven't we? Mm. Nature finds a way. Okay, so let me just jump out of the tunnels of the Worsley Brook for the moment and let me introduce you to Worsley Delph. 
We've been here before, but there's no harm in a, a bit of a refresher. This is Worsley Delft, and what you're looking at here is a former quarry. Up until about the 1750s, this was a quarry. Um, it was utilised later um, by uh, the Duke of Bridgewater, John Gilbert, his engineer, and James Brindley as, as, as a way of getting access to the coal measures that lay behind that, that wall, that cliff edge that you see there, that wall of stone. And indeed, there is access to the Worsley Mines behind there. The curious structure you're looking at actually in the middle there is actually represents a crane that stood there, a rather curious crane. Now, just before we go down there, I want to draw your attention to that outflow of water you can see. I can maybe explain that later in the video. I'm zooming in on it there. And this grass-covered bank, this is the eastern bank. I'll refer to that as the eastern bank. And that has got a bit of a surprise for us as well that I need to discuss with you. Let's just go down there, take a look what it's like. I'll just show you the entrance to the mines. Back in the 1700s, 1800s, thousands of tons of coal were taken from these mines here. I would love to go in, but absolute no go about that deep in uh, iron stained mud and uh, really gaseous it's a coal mine so you, you know certain death if you go in there but yeah i suppose i couldn't come to worsley like i say without showing you the uh, the, the delph it's also worth mentioning all the stone that was taken here as well to build one of the early bridges uh, over the uh, River Irwell. Just for a short period, the mining operation and the quarrying operation existed for a short time side by side. However, that's only according to one source and it appears that the money really was in the coal. Anyway, that's a sluice gate mechanism there. This is one of two entrances to the mines. This leads to a network of 47 miles worth of mines on different levels. Um, absolutely fascinating. <laughs> the thing is, if you look at this, look at all this here. These are interesting, all yeah. the wooden beams. There's been all stuff here. This has been for industry, this. Um, and they've obviously chiseled it back. You can see all the pick marks in the rock. Uh, more things there for, for wood. There's the other entrance. Uh, absolute silted up ochre stained like i said love to go in but uh unfortunately it's not happening okay so let me just introduce you to some of the uh, geography around here there's worsley delf um and you'll see it's kind of like an irregular square with two cuts and like antlers on the top if you like they represent the entrances to the mines to the right you'll see worsley brook and it disappears it stops now it's going to take a dive there downhill. It's all that that on the right side there that you're looking at, where the brook is, is on higher ground, and you'll see School Brow in the middle. This is all higher ground than the Delph, so the brook has got to take a drop down by whatever means it can to to come down a level, because it is going to come down a level. I'm just going to show you a picture here, or I'm going to show you a video here of School Brow, and you can see how the ground starts to go upwards behind the Delph. Now, if you'll bear with me, I just need to show you how everything how everything was according to the old maps, so that we can maybe understand what's going on with the brook when we see various sections of it later and various features. This is a map of Worsley. I think this dates to about 1845. They'll, you'll see that I've represented or I've marked out the uh, Worsley Delft with the blue X. To the right there, you'll see Mill Dam and you'll see Worsley Flour Mills. The Mill Dam is fed by um, the Kempner Brook. And then what leaves the Mill Dam is the Worsley Brook. But I want you to draw your attention to those um, flour mills there. They, they are manorial flour earths, corn and flour mills, and probably certainly predate the, um, the, the, the Worsley Delph as, as a mining activity. And, and I'll tell you where my, what my source is. Um, I'm quoting from a piece of work by Judith Atkinson and John Aldridge. And what they say is, um, the water-powered manorial corn mill with its adjacent mill dam is almost certainly medieval in origin. And that corn mill went through an evolution over the years and it went from water-powered to steam. But we'll come back to that. Okay, so thanks for bearing with me with that. Um, we're about to just now go underground, but now you've got that knowledge about the Delft and the corn mills, we're going to see things 
and your knowledge, our knowledge, might explain what we see. Right, as you can see, rather underwhelming here. We enter underground into this kind of like, what I can only describe as Santa's Grotto. This has been um, rendered with uh, spray creep. The, the brook needed a lot of remedial work doing to it. So the sections that used to be beautiful old brick that have spray created. This is how it used to look. This is Roy's picture taken just over 10 years ago when he went in. And this is how it used to, this is how the entrance used to look. Just takes away all the character of it, doesn't it, when they render it? You can see there's an arch up there. Yeah, that was lovely, thank you. Let's go in and take a look. The spiders are falling yeah. Let's go. So I'm just going to have to break away these spiders right there. So, you know the thing about this is, this could have been... Oh, oh freak! That's where we're going. Come on, first. Yeah. Disturb the spiders and the moths. Yeah. Right. Oh, it's lying with moths. Uh, it's your worst nightmare. Come on. Right, it's lying with moths. Keep your head down. Don't speak to the moths. Do <laughs> that, screaming like a girl. That was a very tough character. Apparently, this is where we go underneath the canal. Bring water up now. Right. I've took a risk here and I've tried to map the journey. I've done it on the old map because on the old map there's more open sections and I can follow it and plot the line more accurately. Um, so I'm going to put arrows where I think we are. Very difficult because obviously we're underground. You'll see where we are now. We're about to go underneath the canal and that's roughly... And I'm probably not far off. That's roughly where about we're about to go under the canal. And you will see from the features that are up and coming, there's a few things we need to discuss. And we'll let you go through. We'll get deep though. That was it. Well, that's where the pen stock is. Wooden pen stock. Right. Uh, you film. Yeah. Oh, so you deep it there. Yeah. Stay to the right. Stay to the right. Yeah. All fish in there. There's fish. Yeah. You bump on your legs. So Okay, so at this point here now, the Worsley Brook goes underneath the Bridgewater Canal. I think it goes underneath the basin. So we're going to go through here now, uh, and there's all people feeding ducks and walking the kids and dogs running around above us. Um, it's been skirting around the uh, Bridgewater Canal for a while, but here it actually goes underneath it, and it looks a bit daunting. Because if you look around this corner, so you'll see we're going to have to negotiate through that, and I can't see an end to it. And I, but I admit to you, I don't like it. <laughs> Just stay in the deep there. And I'll go under first, ready? Yeah. You can see how it's bold there, can't you? Show, show me the perspective. Because I literally crouched in the water now. Yeah. Jesus, right, it drops off quite deep here now. And it's nice and easy to traverse. So, is my rope tack touching? No. <laughs> right, come on guys. Okay, so here's the issue. Quite a long tunnel, and the problem is that in parts it gets quite deep. And the floor in this tunnel is angled. So to the right, it's quite, it's as shallow as it's going to get. To the left, it drops off to, to very, very deep, right? So we've got to try and sort of stay to the right. And even on the right, there's parts where it drops down and it goes deeper. Um, there's also areas of silt, and it's just unknown. Roy came here, again, like I say, 10 years ago, and this was nowhere near the depth that it is now. The issue is, is silt coming in from the mill dams further upstream and filling this place with uh, raising the floor, the silt, the floor with silt, and then, of course, the water level raises as well. So this was not nice. So me and Marcus had to have a bit of a mini debate between us as to whether we were going to carry on or not, and we decided to in the end. And here's your comparison. This is Roy's picture taken in 2012 when he was last here. And you can see the water level against the walls is much lower. If you don't want to stoop as much, try and go a bit more. I'm trying to stay on the right, you said. Yeah. You see where the levels were last night? See, 
See where I am? I'm yeah. alright here. How far is this? Not far. It's not far, so I'm already, I'm already a... Uh, ah, okay. Yes. Just take that and film me a minute. I'll talk you up. Right. I keep moving, guys, but I'm saying, I don't want to get stuck in the room. Hey, this is ace footage, this. Yeah, great, thanks. Shit, me, innit? <laughs> okay, just get some... You're the best of the middle, the middle. You can, you can come to the middle now. Are you sure? Yeah. Right. I'm in. There's people still looking at me and I scream something in the nose. Yeah. Yeah. Think That's about, think about that. What a lovely thought. Think about, think about the tons of water above us right now. Yeah. It comes to the middle a bit. You're stooping part of it there. You're gonna hit your head. What? It's gonna be worried about. Yeah. Come to the middle. All right. You're all right. I, uh, I can't get over how pathetic I look. <laughs> Uh, maybe this is my face all the time when I'm doing these things. Anyway, the problem is that you're walking on an uneven surface. The floor drifts away to the right as you're looking at me. So the floor is on, on an angle, like I say, to the right. Occasionally keep dropping down, so the floor is very uneven. I say floor. And then occasionally you'll start to sink into very sinking mud. So it's up and down, up and down, up and down. And I'm bending over and it's just really uncomfortable. Uh, I just wanted it to end, but I'm glad I did it now. Okay, let's just take a break. I need to show you this because it's going to explain something we're about to see. A survey of Worsley produced by John Fulkes in 1785. I love the way they had to draw everything. Um, you'll see that it's very busy. You'll see that the canal is there. You'll see it says yard, docks, dry docks, timber. Um, there was a timber yard. You can see our corn mill on it there. But I'm showing you this because th these docks, these dry docks, um, drained down into the brook where we are. So you can see that everything that's going on there this will explain what we're about to look at, and there's two of these in this part that we're in now. Is it bad, Sil? No, it is in the middle. It is quite solid. It's not fucking good that at all. So there you go. I believe that that, that tunnel there, that channel, it comes from the dry dock that's still used up above in, in the one of the boatyards, and they can use the sluice gate just to, to drain... Uh, the dry dock. Yeah, there's a picture of it there. That's from the 1920s. That picture. Right. Yeah, it's nice. It's flattened out. It's quite. It's quite. It's quite on the concrete floor here. Once it gets in there, now. But you can see how deep it was yesterday. Yeah. Well, if it rains in a bit, it's going to be up to there. So we'll be able to scrape. Yeah. So we need to. And there you go. A uh, second uh, drainage edit. I mean, I don't know if these are still used because. Some of the dry docks aren't used anymore. I think there's one that's used, but that's I strongly suspect that's what it is. And you can see something inside there at the end. Hmm, interesting. So this is all Worsley. Shall when you come to Worsley, you don't see this. Yeah. You don't, to, you don't have to do that, you are sweating like that. That's a piece of stone that's gone through. You go front and front, so this is cool. It's not deep enough. No. It's all flat now. So that is supporting that piece of stone there. I wonder if we're near that old house. Okay, so a nice brick section now. It was quite long, so I'm going to cut it to the next feature that we see. See again, look at that one. Ram. Is that a sewer overflow? The ram. See that one up there, Oh, wow. Oh, cool. That's interesting. This little leak spring in the wall there was concerning because we thought it may have been raining outside. It wasn't. So where's the thing with the Right, I wish I was here ten years ago because this chamber is all brick and one of the one of the sort of original features has been ruined. Um here where Roy's pointing to above the uh, the tunnel was a wooden penstock. I've got a picture of it of it for you that Roy took. 
but they've just spray created over it and they've kind of ruined it now. Um, so I'm going to point to it now. You'll see the remains of what was a gate type thing, but it's kind of ruined now because it's got it's covered in sort of concrete. Here's Roy's picture from 11 years ago of how it used to look. The wood set into the brick and now the fact that they've sprayed all over it with spray creek just ruins that dramatic effect. But it looks beautiful and that was one of the things I wanted to see. But unfortunately you don't find out until you get down here that it's been, uh, things have changed. And above ground, just by the canal, now all very, very overgrown is the penstock control, the penstock mechanism that would have raised and lowered that gate. Um, so if you're ever in Worsley and you wonder what it is, what that's there for, you now know. But great that they've, uh, they've saved it and kept that. What's in there? Well, I think that's where that was. Shit. What? Okay, let's look at our map. That's roughly where we are, roughly where we are. Um, we're about to now approach a section that I call the open section or the oasis. Uh, but we have to tr go down this last bit of a spray created section first. And the daylight and the fresh air were most welcome. This place was fascinating. I don't know. I mean, obviously, that's some kind of culvert that's directing water. I don't know what it did and why it's there. And I'm not even going to speculate. I'm just going to have to leave it open. That concrete plug there is interesting. Um, and then if we follow it down, you can see the remains there of an old gate, sluice gate mechanism. That must be very old, but this is all very interesting and I don't fully know what it was for, so I'm not going to say. However, I am going to read you this because there was a series, a network of culverts underneath the delf that drained into the brook. I'll, I'll read you this. I'm reading it from about um, halfway down. Uh, the culvert connected with another network of drains that ultimately appear to have discharged into the Worsley Brook. Whilst the full extent of this elaborate network of culverts remains uncertain, it is evident that they were important to the drainage of the mine and the operation of the canal. It appears to have enabled the tunnels and the canal basin to be drained independently without affecting the flow of water draining from the mine. It also appears likely that it would have, it would have provided an effective means of carrying silt away from the site, site and into the Worsley Brook. And I think we've been walking some of that silt in that low section. Which brings us to this that I found, uh, a plan of the culvert system at Worsley Delft based on a survey in 1780. The culvert system is the blue lines and as always I've marked the Worsley Delft with a blue cross. All I can say to you is that that long section of culvert that ends at the green cross seems to correspond with where we are now in the open section. You can see standing on this bank how low down the brook is at this point. Um, old section of culvert to the left there and then a different section or age of culvert to the right um, and where we are where the camera is there's houses there um, back down at, um, brook level and you can see these old walls Pfft, love to know what it was all about but this is a very um, very old culvert we're about to enter into look at the the, the, the work stone there and you can just get a sneak peek of where we're going to the right there but very very old section this is the final section and it's actually got as you can see the actual original um, rock bed of, of the brook <laughs> Thank you. 
Difficult to negotiate this uh, this rock bed floor because it's full of uh, little deep pools and everything you got to watch for. One culvert ends and we enter another section of culvert now. These were possibly done at different times, but what you'll see from the next few clips is that we're heading uphill. If you remember how I pointed out how the land rose up, up uh, School Brow and we're heading uphill now towards that um, mill pond, the Old Walk Dam. More evidence there of beautiful dressed stone in this culvert um, and we're heading towards the, the final section now. But I want to bring something very interesting to your attention before we head to the final section. Okay, so allow me just for a moment to take you back to Worsley Delph. Um, because while when I was looking for information on the brook and the corn mill, obviously a lot of information kept coming up about the Delph and the mines. But there was something interesting that popped up about the corn mill, and it was something I never knew about. And it's very relevant to this video. So take a look at this. Remember the bank? The right hand bank or the eastern bank, I said I'll be t that'll that'll turn up a surprise later in the video. Well, it does turn up a surprise. Something that was a bit of a surprise for me. A lot of people may know about it. Um, if you take a look at our journey map here, all the time it's said at the top left hand side there, secret tunnel. And this secret tunnel was discovered in 2018. And like I say, many people may know about it. I didn't. And it's very relevant to our uh, corn uh, flour mill. There you go, a tunnel. <laughs> I never knew that was there, but you wouldn't because it's covered in weeds. So that's that bank, that eastern bank I've been telling you about. And it says here, I'm going to jump round on this article. Uh, As part of the restoration works in 2018, the most remarkable discoveries were made. A large brick arch tunnel that extended southeastwards from Worsley Delft towards the former corn mill. The tunnel was at least 12 metres long, 3 metres wide and over 2.5 metres high and was thus large enough to take a horse and cart. A smaller branch tunnel, tunnel was identified near to its southern end, although this had been blocked off and was inaccessible. How cool is that and why isn't it still available to see? Okay, so what is the tunnel all about? What was it for? Well, they're not entirely sure, but it, it won't be. This hasn't been dug as a mystery. This has been dug for purpose. The thinking, according to this, it's, it's after 1807 because some sketches were made and it doesn't appear on those sketches prior to 1807. Um, its intended function is not entirely certain, although it may have provided a means of transporting coal from Worsley Delft to the boiler house in the basement of the corn mill, which had developed from a small water-powered mill supplying a local community to an enlarged steam-powered uh, factory with a larger client base. So basically, it's the evolution of our corn mill turned into a steam-powered mill and they needed coal. And the boats would literally come out of the uh, the mines, dock there, and then they, they, apparently they had a horse and cart in there that was taking coal down to the boilers at the, um, at the corn mill. Fascinating stuff, absolutely fascinating. Anyway, we're at the last part of our culvert. There is more to come. We've got more investigations to do, but we're at the last part of our culvert and probably the most intriguing feature. So let's take a, a, a walk now down the last part of the spray-created section of our Worsley Brook culvert.
How fantastic is that? Uh, I suppose I've got some explaining to do, but unfortunately I can't explain. There are your close-ups. The right-hand uh, tunnel, nothing there. Left-hand tunnel, there was, when the lights went off, there was a little bit of light coming through that left-hand portal. All I can tell you is that the section now running up towards it gets extremely deep. The first section in front of us, um, where all these rocks are and the branches, gets very rocky and very deep pools. And then I know for a fact, because we're not the first ones to come here, people have been here before, and they've documented that in that chamber where the water's pouring into, it's, it's they've poked things down there, tripods and things, and there's no bottom to it. So we're going to have to take a little bit of caution here and, and pause here. I've shown you the close-ups. I cannot explain why the brook does this at this point. I cannot explain it. Um, as you know, walking upstream, we've been on an upwards trajectory. All I can think is that at this point, they needed the brook to be at a lower level. They needed, maybe it was on its downward trajectory down the rock bed, and maybe they've blasted out some rock bed and decided we need to drop it here, maybe to drain something into it. So they needed it at a lower level at that point. That's the only explanation I can offer. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. It's treacherous. Um, that's all I can say to you. Okay, quick afterthought. Looking at this, we're in a kind of a, we're in a rock tunnel here, aren't we? There's no, this isn't a culvert, this is a natural rock tunnel. Has it been, did it form this tunnel, the brook? Or has it been diverted this way? Maybe because of the corn mill. Maybe to drive the wheel. I'm only speculating, I don't know. But all we know is that at this point, where the chamber is, the brook has been manipulated and then it appears to be in a natural rock tunnel. Right, well there's nothing more I can say about it, so let's go and try and take a look at the other side of that drop shaft and see if we can find where the, the water enters into that tunnel. Okay, so this is School Brow. We need to go up here, and I think we need to branch to the right here to try and find the rest of the, uh, the Worsley Brook, or the Kempner Brook, as I think it turns into. Okay, so this is where we are. There is Worsley Delph. We've come up School Lane. We're about to enter this area here. You'll see it says Mill Dam and you'll see there's a bigger uh, body of water here called Reservoir. I think this is called Old Walk Reservoir. I'm not sure why it's called that. Local people will know. And you'll see uh, the flour mills there. Our drop shaft for the Worsley Brook is around about here. So we're in this area here looking for um, evidence of the drop shaft from the other side. Now, uh, this, I'm going to show you this as it is now. There you go, look at that. There's the Delph, and we're in this area here. So that lower body of water has become very, very silted up, and I think it's very overgrown, and it's almost, it, it's like it doesn't exist anymore as, as any kind of like lake at all. Um, whereas the, the drop shaft is round about here somewhere, difficult to tell, but we've had to negotiate through all these um, trees and all this undergrowth here. Up here, this bigger section is still here. This bigger water body is here. And if you look here, it's fed by the Kempner Brook. Um, I presume the Kempner Brook is called so because over here, where have we gone? Over here, we've got uh, Kempnall Hall. I pre presume it's got something to do with that. Back to Google Earth. Kempner Brook feeds this. This in turn feeds what was a mill dam here. Uh, but that's where we are in all that there. Right, we've had a right job. So you know when I left you and the, the, the brook, brook came, dropped down that thing. Um, we've tried to follow and find the other side of it. And we're here, we've had a right job. We've come through all that, not got waders on, it would have been easier to walk in the brook, but we've come through all that undergrowth there. Unbelievable, but dead interesting. We've found where it goes in and drops down. There's a little lake up there and you'll see here there's a split we're at the back of the house here, so we need to be careful. There's a split here. The brook carries on its normal way there. Right, and I'm going to show you where it goes to. It goes to where it just dropped, where you saw us underground before. And then it's siphoned off here. And this part here feeds into, there you go, and that's that little fork that goes into the delf. And there's a penstock there. 
Yes, so we think this this little branch that feeds off the Worsley Brook down this lovely penstock is that there, and that's what they've they've done that to feed into the delf to uh, keep the delf at a certain level. And of course, we know they can drain the delf as well. And that's the other way there. That's what we just runs down here, literally, and then it runs there now. And there you go. That's the entrance to the short tunnel that goes into the drop shaft. Um, we didn't know what flew out of there when Marcus tried to move that stick out the way. Whether it was large moths or bats, we're not quite sure, but it was. It gave us a bit of a fright. I did want to go in there. It would have required crawling, um, but <clears throat> we didn't have the gear on. We'd just been to the pub. This all was an afterthought. Um, so... It is only a short tunnel, and then we see the, the drop shaft. So there you go, that's the other side of it for you. Straight away, look at that. We've got uh, Mason's marks in the walls there. Same guy did them too, didn't he? Well, there you go. That's where it disappears underneath. Okay, final word. I really enjoyed this one. I know that I've said a lot. I don't know what that is. I don't know what it is. I don't know why it does that. And that's the only honest answer I can give because all I can do is show you the infrastructure in the area, show you what's going on and then show you what we found. Don't forget, I'm not an expert, I'm just an idiot with a torch. And I can just say, I just need to set you, I've shown you all these bits, the rest of it, I don't know what it is, right? To speculate and to draw conclusions would be the wrong thing to do. Anyway, if you've got this far, thank you very much for watching. So there you go, Worsley Brook. Just a short section, but a uh, very interesting section and interesting that it, we had all that old canal engineering and architecture around it. So, well, without further ado, we'll get going. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Marcus. Thanks, Roy. And uh, thanks for the old pictures as well, Roy, of that old uh, wooden penstock. Uh -huh. Thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.